My name is Scott Steedman and I'm a civil engineer, but I'm now working as Director of Standards at BSI, what used to be called the British Standards Institution. BSI is one of the world's leading standards organisations and our, our role is to try and shape the knowledge that in engineers and in fact all industrial sectors use to achieve advantage in the marketplace, to improve the quality of their products and services and to be more competitive uh, around the world. BSI is appointed by the UK government as the national standards body. Every country in the world has one, so we are responsible, we're the, the guardians, the custodians of the national standards catalogue, all those British standards that are needed throughout industry. In fact, there are 37,000 of those standards and we're working on about 7,000 of them at any one time. Over 84% of them are now international and European standards. We've transitioned from old style British standards to a style where we're using international and writing European standards to supplement that catalogue across our industry. This helps us be much more competitive globally in what's called soft power, where our industry, our companies can take those standards, take those good practices and win projects all over the world. The origins of BSI are very closely related to the Institution of Civil Engineers, to the ICE. In fact, the IC founded the first Engineering Standards Committee in 1901. And it was from that origin that the British Engineering Standards Association became uh, uh, incorporated in 1918 and later the name changed to BSI in 1931. So it's a long history, in fact, the world's first national standards body and today a leading player in the global uh, race to shape best business practice whether well, that's in anti-bribery, quality management, or construction design and, and, and manufacturing practice. These are examples of what standards look like today. This is a, a new standard on tunnel design, the design of concrete segmental tunnel linings, which was done for High Speed 2, the, uh, the new rail project. And again, this was developed by industry, wanting to improve the way that we're working on this huge project that's uh, coming about. And this one, supported by the IC itself, called PAS128, a specification for the underground utility detection, verification and location. You think that might sound a, a, a tiny bit uh, unusual, but actually finding underground utilities in the street is really, really important. And if you're working on huge assets like Heathrow Airport, uh, you don't want to drill a hole in the wrong place. So this standard is about helping industry explain to its clients how they're going to work to the sort of standards that they want to work to. All these standards are voluntary, they're just used to drive industry best performance. Of course as we transition into a digital economy for the world, then the UK experts are very keen to work in the Internet of Things, how everything is connected to the Internet, everything is connected to everything else, and whether it's in the construction sector or manufacturing, uh, this is all fundamental. So in the world of smart cities for example, you need standards to help connect together the data sets that are used in a city, connect together the technology providers, the consumers, the city authorities, so they can all exchange the information in a safe and secure way and provide the consumer with, with better services. So standards are a really vital part of the way the industry work. When you look at the value of the built environment to the global economy, it's about 40% of global GDP. That's the value of the assets that contribute to the global world. So that's about five times as big as the actual construction industry itself. The real value of the asset comes through the use of the building, the railway line, the airport, and so on. So the role of civil engineering has never been more important in shaping the way that the future of the world develops, the global economy, our innovation, our sustainability. So this is an extraordinary area to be working in, to be working to improve best practices in this industry where the, the added value that we're contributing to society is so huge. As we're in a world where we're increasing in our population rate but we're also innovating faster than we've ever innovated before, the race is on to create a global best practice in construction, in design, in operation where we can achieve the efficiencies that we need to achieve and build a more sustainable world for the future. The reason I became a civil engineer was because I wanted to make the world a better place. I wanted to improve people's quality of life. And you can do that by designing things, by building things, 
or through sharing knowledge. And one of the things I really, really love about working at BSI is that I'm here helping to shape what good practice looks like, helping to shape the knowledge that industry will use to be more successful, more innovative, more competitive around the world. That's why I became a civil engineer.